Hey, how's going on guys? This is Shihab and today I'm gonna talk about CPU. Quite a long time ago I made a video about GPUs or graphics cards, which graphics card you should buy and why, these sort of things. And today I'm going to talk about CPU or processor, which processor should you need and how much cores, how much clock speed you need, all kind of stuff. So basically some people say picking a CPU is not a very hard thing to do, but I think it will help you later if you choose the right one. So starting with the Intel processor, where I can or we can see the leading names, the Core i5, Core i3, Core i7, these kinds of um, processors. But here are some things to understand. All the Core i5 or Core i7 or the Core i3 processor are not the same. Some are third gen IBBs, architecture technology, some are fourth gen Haswell and the latest fifth generation processor called Broadwell. So what all that matters or differs? So I'm starting this history a little bit behind from the third gen processor. Um, from maybe 2005 or 2006, um, they called it the Sandy Bridge technology where the chip was 32 nanometer and the latest IOE bridge technology is 22 nanometer. So it has less travel path than the large CPUs, which does some basic things like due to short travel path, it operate quickly and due to short travel path there is less resistance so there is less resistance meaning there is less loss of electricity so it burns electricity much less than the old sandy bridge technology and due to burn less electricity it produces less heat so overall there are lots of benefits right yes so these days still third gen intel ib bridge processor is available um, which has 22 nanometer arc architecture then the fourth gen cpu which also has the 22 nanometer architecture and fourth gen cpus are designed more nice that it consumes significant less energy and the integrated graphics in fourth gen cpus is much more powerful than the third gen in third gen integrated graphics was intel hd 4000 and in fourth gen the integrated graphics is intel hd 4600 which is roughly 33 percent more powerful so in 4th gen, the integrated graphics is pretty powerful. So using a 4th gen Intel processor in a mobile devices like laptop, you will get a tons of battery backup. Um, if you are getting a 3 or 4 hours of battery backup in your 3rd um, gen uh, ivory architecture CPUs, you will get almost double 8 or 9 hours of battery backup with the 4th gen Haswell processors. And the next upcoming fifth gen processor which called Broadwell which has even tinier architecture here only 14 nanometer architecture which is really very tiny makes a really short path to travel gives you much quicker processing cycle produce more performance consume less energy produce less heat so lots of benefit of upcoming fifth gen Broadwell processors so this was enough information you should know about gen generations so Long story short, if you are buying for a CPU, um, make sure you get the latest one. Like, like now, the Haswell 4th generation is available everywhere. So if you are uh, buying a PC now, make sure it at least 4th gen, not the 3rd gen. So buying the latest generation CPU is better. Then let's talk about the branding names, cores, Core i5, Core i3, Core i7, these things. So starting with the Core i3, Core i3 has two physical cores, a 3 megabyte of cache memory and it does support hyper threading. So two cores, you can also call it dual core. It doesn't have Intel Turbo Boost technology or this processor doesn't come with the Intel K models. I will talk about those in a moment. So it has hyper threading. Let's talk about it. In a simple language, in your operating system, it shows um, double the amount of core actually physically inside the CPU has. Meaning a Core i3 CPU has two cores in a heavy load. In your operating system it will act as a four core CPU. Though it is not as powerful having as a real four core CPUs like Intel Core i5 but it boosts the performance a little bit. And Core i3 CPUs comes in variety of clock speed. Um, get more clock speed if you like to do gaming. I'll talk about the gaming compatibilities after the Core i5 or the Core i7. Now let's talk about the Core i5, which has four physical cores. It has six megabyte of K 
cache memory. It also comes with a variety of clock speed, um, starting with 3 GHz um, up to close 4 GHz. It doesn't support hyperthreading, so it can't artificially act like it has a 4 into 2 8 cores, so it doesn't actually act artificially as a 8 core. But unlike the Core i3, it does have Turbo Boost and it comes with K models. Intel Turbo Boost technology a very nice thing it actually automatically overclock your clock speed in heavy load so as example a intel core i5 4590 3.3 GHz processor um, comes with a 3.3 GHz um, factory clock speed but in heavy load it can go up to 3.7 GHz installing some extra liquid cooling system in your cpu like um, radiator or water cooling and slightly bumping the voltage you can get um, nearly 4.2 or 4.4 gigahertz of clock speed which is great and core i5 comes with k models any processor you see a k after the model number like um intel core i5 45xx i mean 4590 4560 45xx um, then a k so this k has extra feature so these cpus are unlocked or unleashed version um, in clock speed. So with this unlocked version, you can overclock your CPU in a huge amount like 4.6 or 4.7 GHz um, bumping up the voltage, um, implementing some awesome liquid cooling in your CPU. But if you give too much voltage, too much clock speed like 4.85 GHz and don't cool your um, CPU properly, you're gonna fry your CPU. So that's a very geeky thing, don't try if you are a beginner. So Core i5 comes with 4 cores, 6 MB of cache, it doesn't support hyper threading, it supports Turbo Boost technology and it comes with Intel K models. And finally, the king of the hill, the Core i7, it actually supports like everything. It does support hyper threading, it does support Turbo Boosting, it comes with Intel K models and it comes with 2 to up to 6 cores. It does support hyper threading so a 6 core CPU can uh, um, artificially act like a 12 core CPU. It does support turbo boosting. So right now you may be thinking I learned a lot about CPUs but how much actually need? First ask yourself what you are going to do with your system is the number one question you should ask yourself. So if you are going to do um, Basically, people think um, a lot about when they are going to gaming. So I am explaining some things about gaming in a moment. If you are building a PC for home, just for watching um, some YouTube, browsing net, watching movies, um, this kind of stuff, sometimes a little gaming, a Core i3 processor will do just fine. Remember, all 4th gen CPUs supports 4K resolution. So definitely a Core i3 4th gen you know, CPU will support a 4K resolution, it output a 4K resolution in your monitor or screen. But outputting a 4K resolution is one thing and um, gaming in 4K resolution is another thing. So um, you maybe can see some 4K content in your i3 processor but if you want to um, game in 4K you should consider a Core i5 processor at least. Another thing, um, watching some 4K content from your hard drive is one thing and watching some 4K content if you have that much fast internet speed um, then if you want to see a 4K content in online streaming like in YouTube or Netflix or that kind of stuff so that will make your processor sort because a 1080p or full HD screen is about 2 megapixels of the size and a 4k is about 8 megapixels so there is a huge amount of difference in resolution and the per frame data but other than that a core i3 will do just fine in 4k watching and general stuff then the core i5 a core i5 is the sweet spot for beginner enthusiast and upper level and people who are going to get the core i7 i think they probably know what they are going to get and why they are going to get the particular one so i'm not explaining a lot about the core i7 so core i5 will almost do everything you need starting from the gaming and doing some 
um, work in Adobe uh, After Effects, rendering 3D, working in graphics, editing videos, editing photos in Photoshop, and this kind of uh, doing heavy work in heavy applications will do just fine for a5 and now i'm going to talk about the gaming section but before starting the gaming i want to talk about um, a little about the brands there are two major brands um, producing processors intel amd both produces great silicon chips both are great both has some difference and you should prefer one over another for some few reasons i'll explain that in a moment but here is the thing, if your priority is actually not about gaming rather than doing some um, high work like doing lots of calculation, algorithm, lots of that kind of thing, definitely go for the Intel because Intel is completely um, errorless, error free, um, they don't bug, they don't hang, just a super premium piece of silicon chip but that doesn't mean a AMD chip has a error or it lags so high calculation high work definitely Intel will suit better then comes the AMD if your target builds priority first is gaming then some other works like editing in um, Photoshop Lightroom um, Premiere Pro After Effects editing rendering 3d then um, doing some general um, algorithm or calculation then a um, AMD chip will give you much more better performance than your Intel here is why I'm talking about two processor here um, around 100 bucks of budget so around $100 you can get a Intel Core i3 4160 processor with a clock speed of 3.0 6 gigahertz and it has only two cores it will cost you hundred and twenty dollars and around this budget here is the AMD processor the bulldozer FX 4350 which has 4.2 gigahertz of clock speed and it has four physical cores so in same budget range you are getting in Intel two cores and in AMD 4 cores and this processor cost only 87 bucks so in the same territory of budget like 100 or 700 dollar you are getting in Intel Intel Core i3 with two physical cores 3.6 gigahertz and in AMD you are getting um, four physical cores and 4.2 gigahertz factory clock speed so in gaming definitely more clock speed and more um, course will help you to get a better performance here is another example of sub $200 or around $200 budget a Intel Core i5 459G 3.3 GHz factory clock speed will cost you 199 bucks in Amazon right now I'm filming and Core i5 is a 4 core or quad core CPU and a AMD bulldozer FX 8350 um, has a 4 gigahertz and again in AMD will cost you less some bucks and the AMD bulldozer FX 8350 will cost you 165 bucks in Amazon right now and will give you 4 gigahertz of factory clock speed and a 8 core CPU so in Intel in Core i5 in this budget you are getting a 4 core 4 quad core or four core CPU with a factory clock speed of 3.3 GHz and in AMD you are getting um, a uh, eight core or octa core CPU with a factory clock speed of 4 GHz and if you notice slightly the AMD processors are cheaper than the um, Intel's and almost gives you the double amount of cores and some more clock speed so as games are be like more core or clock speed hungry so considering a AMD for gaming is a better suit another thing AMD bought ATI a few years back so ATI was a very leading graphics making companies um, like Nvidia so now ATI Radon is now AMD Radon so 
there is some family thing if you are getting a amd processor and a amd a gpu or the graphics card you are in the same family so i think this video helped you a lot about getting the right cpu for you i hope you enjoyed this video if you did definitely hit the thumbs up button it's really very appreciated and share this video if you think your friend is looking for a um, suggestions or some information about um, buying cpu in coming week i'm making a pc build project or pbp 2015 so pc build project 2015 uh, ultimately i'm making a pc um, totally new system for myself um, this rig is completely for my personal use and also i will give you some tons of information about building pc and making those kind of things and how why and what should you get for what purpose so definitely subscribe for that if you subscribe you will get notified and subscribing helps me a lot and inspire me to work more for give you a um, better videos in future so please subscribe to my channel anyway guys that's it for now stay tuned in my channel stay awesome and i'll see you guys in the next one